horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. Transcontinental Railroad was one of the most important steps in the winning of the West. The railroad was of prime importance to the future of the country. But powerful forces, cattlemen, stagecoach lines, and steamship companies opposed it. Outlaw opposition sprang up, and the Lone Ranger was commissioned by the President to lead the fight against the enemies of progress. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for end of track. Oh, Silver! Power! Buckling town in the whole west, from the Mississippi to the Golden Gate, was a town without a name. Day and night, the rattle of gunshots banged away. The thunder of hoofs and the shouts and yells of husky working men on the spree made a roar louder than a river in flood. And what was more, this town never stayed in the same place for very long. For days, a week, sometimes two weeks. Then the buildings were knocked down, taken to another location, and nothing remained to mark the previous site but a few crude crosses over the graves of men who had been quick to anger but not quick enough on the draw, who had gone down before the flaming guns of a faster opponent. The only name this town had was End of Track. End of Track. Colonel Parkman, this time there are six graves, one for each day the town was located here. Yes, Miss Barkley. The tracks have moved 50 miles further west, and so is the town. Can't something be done about these deaths? Building a railroad is a job for men, Miss Barkley. When gangs of men work hard all day, laying rails or making grades, they, well, they just naturally have to break loose at night. Oh, but six, it's getting worse. Oh, yes, it is. What about the soldiers who are detailed to police the railroad? Can't you assign more of them to the end of track? I wish I could, Joan. But why not? Well, look west there, along the rails. What do you see? Why, well, I, I see the rails and the men working, and the work trains carrying ties and rails and tools. And beyond it... The rolling plains fading into the horizon. And what's hidden behind those hills? What's hidden? Danger, Joan. I see danger hidden beyond those hills. Indians, outlaws, settlers who resent the coming of the iron horse. There's trouble in the town at the end of the track, but there's more trouble out there. And that's where the soldiers are. All of them? Miss Barkley, if I could get twice as many, that still wouldn't be enough. I've telegraphed Washington over and over, I but so... I see, Colonel. Well, then the town... Well, I... I've appointed a marshal to run the gambling element out of town. That's all I can do. And I can't stay here any longer. I've got to go up and look at construction at the end of the track. Colonel, do you mind if I stay here? I know I'm your secretary, but well, I... You're supposed to be my secretary, Miss Barkley. I know very well that you're working for the government. Colonel... Oh, it's all right. No one around to hear me. Your work for me is just a front to fool the rest. 
But I ask no questions, Miss Barkley. We're both trying to build the railroad. And that's that. Now, if you'll excuse Colonel, me... Colonel, who have you appointed as marshal? Jeff Coster. Jeff? Oh. I hope he works out. Adios, Miss Barkley. Yes. Adios, Colonel. Jeff Coster. <laughs> Miss Harvey. Hello, that's Miss Barkley. Look, up near Judas Tree. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Hi! Steady, steady, Scout. Open the hole. Open the hole. Over the ridge. Masked man, you're just the one I was hoping to see. Where's the end of track, Miss Barkley? Pulled up stakes this morning. It's 50 miles west at Powder Creek. There have been a lot of shooting scrapes lately. Oh, then you've noticed. Yes, six men buried. Colonel Parkman can't spare you any soldiers to clean up the town. He's appointed a marshal. Oh, what marshal's name? Just a moment, Otto. Miss Barkley, Otto and I think that there's an organized band behind all this, stirring up trouble wherever possible. I'm sure of that, too. The same band that's trying to prevent the building of the railroad in other ways, like Indian raids, buffalo stampedes across the grade, fire, pay cash robbery. The railroad must go through. The country needs it. It will go through. But, uh, well, Otto and I have a good idea who's behind this trouble in the towns. You have? Before the shacks were set up here, end of track was at the West Platte, wasn't it? Yes. We were there this morning. This morning? But that's 50 miles back along the track. <laughs> you travel fast. Silver and Scout can cover the ground. Anyway, we searched the ground there uh, and... I'll wager you found plenty of empty gun shells. We found something else. Ah, uh, me got it in the saddlebag. You wait. Here. Here. Yeah. This is what we find. Why, it's... It's a spur. That's right. An iron spur, Miss Barkley. The iron spur, then... That's right. That's what's behind the trouble at the end of track. The band of the iron spur. Now, tell us, who is the marshal? His name is Jeff Coster. So you're Jeff Coster. Well, howdy, Mr. Coster. Howdy. Oh, is it putting the horses in the corral? Should we mosey inside and talk? I reckon we can talk, yeah. Sure, we're miles from the railroad. <laughs> I hope my gang didn't make too much ruckus at Potty Creek. <laughs> no, no. Burned down a few shacks, wounded a railroad for me. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, ain't it? <laughs> and uh, as you've been appointed marshal to preserve law and order for the railroad, you just hopped on your horse and chased him, didn't you? All by yourself. Yep. When I get back, I'll let it be known that I followed the trail for 20 miles and then lost it. <laughs> uh -huh. Nobody will savvy that you just use that as an alibi to get out here and talk to me, huh? Right? Right. <laughs> you know, it's a pleasure to do business with a sensible gent like you, Coster. Likewise, Kilgrew. Um, now a, uh, a little matter of payment. You spoke to Deaver? He approached me way back at the plant. That was when Colonel Parkman gave you the job, huh? Yeah. The way I got the deal, Kilgrew... I'm to do all I can to help you rip them towns wide open. And I will, providing you pay me enough. Kino, I get plenty of cash. Here. Here's 20 double eagles. How's that for a down payment? 400 cash. Mister, I'm your man. From now on... From now on, I just act like a marshal. I stop all kinds of scrapes. Unless... Yeah, unless you get the sign of the iron spur. Now you better head back to Potter Creek Pronto. Sure will. Come here, horse. Adios, Kilgrew. Adios, Coster. I'll be sending Deaver into Potter Creek. So uh, be watching for him, Sammy. That's right. We'll wander around separately, Kimosabi. Keep your eyes open for Custer. Mm, Marshal. Yes, he's around somewhere. Me hear man talk this afternoon. Him say Custer chased band out of town. 
It doesn't fit in with what we know about Costa Tonto, although we can't prove any of it. Uh, him plenty shady. He's known as a gunfighter. Well, this job requires a gunfighter, but there are two kinds, Tonto. Some good, some bad. Ah. Now, what we do with Silver and Scout? Take them with us. Oh, but there are plenty of hitching rails. If there's any trouble, we may want to ride fast and far. Now, remember, we're looking for Costa. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. having some fun. Well, maybe so, but there's no need to raise a roof. Colonel Parkman authorized me to preserve law and order in this town. I aim to handle them my own way. Any of you hombres want to use guns? Now you keep your shirt on, Marshal. Just cool down. That's better. Got nice work, Costa. Huh? You recall me? Steve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Howdy, howdy. I reckon we can stand at the bar here and talk. Everybody else is keeping their distance. Sure. You look like we're having a sociable drink. Kilgrew sent you down with a message? Yeah. Three nights from now, Costa. You arranged to be out of town, Savvy. Yeah? Get some excuse. Just be gone after sundown. You're planning something. Yep. Something big, Costa. As long as the marshal ain't around. Hi, Savvy. Then whatever happens, I won't get blamed. Kino, I'll be heading out of Powder Creek before sundown. Three nights from now. Oh, you cotton-headed fool. Sorry. I didn't mean to bump into you. Sorry, mister. Why, that ornery... Who is that hombre? He's a big fella, ain't he? I don't know. But he bumped into me deliberate. He's wearing two guns, Costa. I know where I'm six feet under. Hey, what are you aiming to do? Deaver, I figure this is a good chance to show all these railroad gangs that I'm top man when it comes to gunplay. Yeah, that ain't a bad idea, but... Uh... But what? Well, this gent looks like he can handle himself plenty good. Look, suppose I go around the other side of him ready to draw. And we got him whipped so... No, no, no. No need for that. Besides, it won't look right to these men here. If there's any trouble, then you start shooting. But there won't be. You suit yourself. Yeah. You! Mister! You're talking to me? I'm looking at you, aren't I? Unhitch that gun belt, mister. Oh? I'm the marshal here, and I don't want anybody to... There are a lot of others wearing guns, marshal. Why single me out? You're a stranger, and I don't like your looks, that's why. Well, that makes us even. I don't like your looks, either. <laughs> yeah, you'd better stop laughing. Mister, you gonna shuck those guns, or do I have to make you? As long as there's no law about it, I uh, reckon you'll have to make me, marshal. What's that? Well, I'm not looking for a fight. Mister, you'd better draw. I told you I wasn't looking well, for a fight. Well, I am. Reach. Well, if you won't, then I will. Oh, my Did you see that? He shot the guns right out of the marshal's hand. He shot the marshal. He's a gunman. Get him, boys. He's an outlaw. Shoot. Good for it, Where is he? He shot out the lamp. Where'd he go? Shut the door. Who's Silver? Hit. All right, Silver, let's go. Here they come. Come on, Silver. Hi, Kima Savi. Come to hear plenty of shots from Cafe. See you right out. You hurt? No, Tonto, I wasn't touched. Costa picked a fight with me. <laughs> Him not know you, Lone Ranger, huh? He was showing off in front of the railroad men, but it didn't work. You shoot guns from his hand? Yes. And a man named Deaver started shooting wild. I didn't want anyone to be hurt, so I shut out the lamp and left in the darkness. You not learn anything, huh? Something's going to happen three nights from tonight, Tonto. Huh? I heard Deaver and Costa whispering. Three nights from tonight in Potter Creek. But just what's going to happen, I'm not sure. Maybe it's not important. It's very important. I could tell from the way they said it. Tonto, whatever it is, we've got to find out. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. It was nearly dawn when a rider galloped across the hills to the hideout of the Iron Spur and jumped off his tired horse. Kildrew! Kildrew! Right, uh, what the... Oh, I figured you'd be sleeping. I heard you coming. The way you whipped up your horse sounds like trouble. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of trouble. Is it that Costa hombre? Did he turn a weasel on me? No, it won't, Costa. He's going through with it like you said. All right, then. Speak up. What are you shaking for? It was a shooting scrape in Potter Creek, Kildrew. A stranger wanted him with two guns strapped low. Costa figured I'm facing him down to show off. Oh, tell me after giving Costa $400 he's dead. No. Oh, the stranger's dead, huh? Well, what of it? Say, what the missus The stranger ain't dead at all. He shot the guns right out of Costa's hands. Then when I tried to get him, he shot the lamp and vamoosed. Boss, that hombre was riding a white horse. Yeah. I didn't recognize him in the cafe. He was disguised. But he was the Lone Ranger. Hello? Uh, you look, who oh, he wears a mask. It was him, I tell you. I'd know that white stallion any place. So, a lone ranger, huh? You heard me and Costa talking. <clears throat> I'm beginning to savvy, Davey. The lone ranger's on to us. That's not good. Maybe we'd better change our plans. And How much does he know? He passed right by while we were setting the time. Three nights more? Yeah. Uh, Kill Drew, we'd better change our plans. We better... I make... agree you know. I got it. Huh? It's just him and the engine. The Iron Spurs got more than 20, and all of them dead shots. Maybe we can fix things as we'll get the Lone Ranger at the same time we shoot down those railroad workers. Yeah, that engine goes into town pretty often. Now, listen close, Deeper. We're going to send a note. Silver. I recognize it, too. There's Tonto coming back from town. He's traveling fast. Hi! Hi! Oh, 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 oh. What is it, Tonto? Something happened in town? Uh, Tonto get note. A note? Uh, me not know who put note on Saddlehorn. There are plenty of men. Heap big crowd in town. Here, you read it. It's too dark to see plainly. Uh, you wait. Here. Let me hold flame and stick so you see. There will be trouble at Powder Creek Friday night just before moonrise. Uh -huh. Just before moonrise. Be at the bend of the creek south of the track. You can capture the outlaws of the Iron Spur. Hello. Kimosabe. Me think note from girl, huh? Friday night. Today is... Will be Wednesday. Um, Miss Barkley, plenty smart. She find out what Iron Spur plan to do. This fits in with what I heard Custer and Deaver discussing. That heap good. Moonrise that night at 11 o'clock. We be near Crick then, huh? We save railroad. Bradford. Hey, Bradford. Call on me, Marshal. Yeah. Where's Colonel Parker? Well, I figure he's where he ought to be. Back there a hundred yards in the office freight car. Sparkley's with him. Keno, come along. Huh? You ain't deaf. I said come along. I want to talk to the colonel. I want you with me. I'm a foreman, Coster. There's a railroad to be built. Tracks to be put on. Your men can work for ten minutes without you. Come on, I got something to tell, partner. We're doing right well, Miss Barkley. Twelve miles of track yesterday. I said we're doing... Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. I wasn't listening. Oh, oh. Still fretting about trouble at end of track? There was a shooting scrape at Powder Creek, night before last. But no one was even wounded. I think I made a good choice in Jeff Coster. He'll keep him tamed down. Will he? He's a good man. Oh, I know you've got your own ideas. You're a government agent. You have your own ways of getting information and your own con... Hmm. Come in. Howdy, Colonel. Can I uh, powwow with you for a couple of minutes? Yes. Come in, Coster. Come along, Bradford. Howdy, Miss Barkley. Howdy, Colonel. I ought to be out bossing the gang, but Costa dragged me along. I suppose he has his reasons. Reckon I have, ma'am. Colonel, today's Thursday. Tomorrow night, Powder Creek will be roaring with men spending their pay. Yes, naturally. I won't be around, Colonel. What's this, Costa? Are you telling me you're quitting? Oh, no, 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 sir. Nothing like that. But I think I got a lead on the armory who killed a couple of railroad men back at the West Platte. The Iron Spur. What's that, Miss Barkley? You know about the Iron Spur? It was their work, wasn't it? I, uh, I think so. Only how did Shots, you know? Shots, Marshal. We've been having trouble all along the rails with that Iron Spur outfit. 
Anytime anything goes wrong, we blame the iron spur. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, reckon that's so. <laughs> For a second, I figured maybe, uh, maybe Miss Barkley had some special information. We're wasting time. Get on with it, Coster. Yes, sir. The reason I asked Bradford here to mosey in with me is that uh, I figure he can take over my job for the night. Me? Act as marshal? Well, somebody's got to. <laughs> but I'm no gunfighter. I can shoot well enough. Well, oh, the I... men respect you, don't they? That's right, Bradford. As long as Coster's got to go, you're the best man. There shouldn't be any trouble. You can keep him calm down, Bill. Well, I reckon I can prevent any real ruckus, if that's what you mean. Fine, and it's all settled. Uh, just be sure you give Bradford your badge before you take up this trail, Coster. Yes, sir, Colonel. I'll give it to him tomorrow night. You'll make it a point to be in Powder Creek before nightfall, Bradford? Before nightfall. I'll be there, Marshal. All right, quiet, everybody. It's a horse galloping this way. Yeah, that ought to be cost. Yeah, it's too dark to tell for certain. Keep your guns handy. You're supposed to meet us here. Keep your guns handy. All right, he's up, boys. It's him. Howdy, Costa. Howdy. That's all set, Kilgrew. I'm out of Powder Creek with my alibi. You and your men can go in and rip the town wide open. You know. All right, gents, get around. I reckon you've been wondering why I had you put on railroad workers' clothes instead of your own regular outfits. Yeah, sure. well, what's the idea? Well, here's the reason. A little before moonrise, we're riding to Powder Creek. We'll ground hitch our horses back of the shacks and wander and mingle with the railroad gangs. We'll have our guns. Gents, as soon as the moon rises clear the horizon, we'll start pumping lead at every railroad man in sight. Yeah. You cross a fat kill, bro. There's a hundred of them in town. Fine. But if they go to work on you... That's just it, Costa. That's why we dress just like them. Huh? Don't you see? It looked like a general scrape buster loose. All those railroad men are divided up into working gangs. They're all jealous of each other. They'll start battling among themselves. The track layers against the grading crews, the supply men against the pay crew, everybody. It'll be a riot. We'll smash buildings, set fire to supplies, rip up the rails. Yeah. When we get through with Potter Creek, they'll have to start all over again. Now, do you, Sevy? Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, young please. Time to travel. Follow me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, what about you, Deaver? Ain't you going along? Not just yet, Costa. You and me got a special job to do. A special job like... What's that? You and me? Me? Sure. You don't think you're getting paid just to wander out of town, do you? Do you recollect that hombre who shot the guns out of your hands? Yeah. Well, that was Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Yeah, I spotted his horse. Custer, I sent him a note. He don't know who it's from. A note telling him and the engine to be at the south bend of Powder Creek before moonrise. He ought to be there now, waiting. Put spurs to your horse, Custer. You and me are gonna dry gulch to the Lone Ranger. against the rise. That's them, all right? Yeah, they can make them out. Sitting on their horses. Take the engine. I'll cut down the mass men. We're about... about 50 feet away. We can't miss. Not with these rifles. Draw your bead, Costa. Yeah. Any time now. Now! Deaver, we got him. Knocked him clean off the horse. Pino, cut and run, Costa. You go your way, I'm heading for the town. Have time to walk into town. Now follow me. Oh, boss, boss, killed you. Well, you made it fast, Steve. Yeah. Well, we got them, both of them. Sure. Certain sure. Shot them right off their horses. <laughs> all right, gents. Looks like we're going to be lucky all the way. We'll spread out. Some of us go into the cafe, the rest scatter around. And as soon as the moon clears the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the moon through the window, Diva. It's almost clear now. You get the lantern, Wiley. Yeah. The rest of you watch me. 
Shoot as soon as I do. Yep, it sure is a nice, peaceable evening. <laughs> Couple of seconds, Steve. And then we... What the... Come on, tunnel right through the door. Wait, come ask, man. Don't move any of you. It can't be you. You're dead. That same thing Costa say. Costa, but... but you he... didn't drag out us, Deaver. I knew that note was a trap. Al and I were hiding in the brush. What you shot were figures made of wood and propped up in the saddles. Ah, uh, that's right. Costa, him in Colonel Parkman's office now. Him tied up good. As for the rest of the men... Deaver, it's a railroad That's what you think. Colonel Parkman's men capturing the rest of your band outside. Well, you won't get us alive. He's reaching for a gun. Look out. You're asking for trouble, Deaver. You haven't got a chance. All right, get him. 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 Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hanna, that masked man hadn't warned you. There'd have been more graves than we got railroad tracks. But as it was, we cleaned them up and put them under arrest. Uh, so I see, Bill. Oh, you haven't. You just think you've got us all. But we're only part of the Iron Spur. You didn't get... Didn't get who? Never mind. He means the leader of the Iron Spur. An outlaw named Kilgrew. How, how'd you know who... Never mind. Kilgrew got away in the darkness. But no matter how far he goes or how long it takes... The masked men and tunnel will... Oh, listen. There they go. There they go on the trail of Kilgrew. Listen, Deaver, listen. That's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.